Well, welcome back to Great Day Washington. 50 years ago, the city of Detroit experienced one of its darkest hours. It was during a period of civil unrest where a former police officer beat up an innocent group of uh, mainly African Americans, leaving three dead at a hotel. Yeah, that's Pretty amazing. Crazy. This tragic yeah. story was actually the upheaval. Uh, it was set in the Silver Screen, and the movie is called Detroit. An actor and native Washingtonian, everybody loves him, Laz Alonzo, he <laughs> portrays Congressman Conyers in the film, and he's here right now. Congressman, thanks for coming in for uh, for a little chat. Welcome back. Here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can, uh, can, can we give you an applause? Hey. Let's get an applause to Laz Alonzo. Little hometown right? love. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Thank you so much. Now, Congressman Con he is still he's still serving right now. 100 percent. 88 years old, longest serving congressman. They call him the Dean, cause uh, you know he's uh, he's and he's still active. He's still fighting. Have you talked to him a little bit? I got to meet him yesterday for the first time. Wow. How about that? So it was awesome. I got to meet his wife and his children earlier in the week. And they gave me the thumbs up, so I felt good about yesterday. Wow. Yeah, I was nervous for a minute, but uh, he showed a lot of love, and he got to see the film. And and uh, they said that he was he was somber. He was touched at how accurately it portrayed what he actually lived through back in the 60s. Bad so nerve. his whole family gave you the thumbs up on the film. I got the thumbs up. Tell us about this, because for a lot of people, they may have lost this part of history if they lived in a different part of the country. Sure. Well, the interesting thing is that during the 60s, there were over 300 of these rebellions going on all over the country. So it wasn't just Detroit. This is just one of many, many stories there are to tell. But the important thing is that knowledge is power, and we need to know our history so that we can learn from it and not continue to repeat some of the same mistakes. Did you know about this event? Because I didn't. Because I'm didn't older either. than you, and I don't remember hearing about this. I and, didn't either. Like many people, And I'm, I'm watching sure. the film, yeah. and at the end, there's like r real pictures of real people. I'm saying, this actually happened? 100%. And, and something that Catherine did was, during the film, she actually used real footage from those times as well. And Catherine so, is? Catherine Bigelow, our okay. director. She did other Huge. things, did she? Hurt Locker, Zero yes. Dark Thirty. Yes. She's won a, you know, an Oscar or two you know, oh, here yeah. or there. <laughs> um, you know, but, but she's a master at, at telling the human side of the story. You know, uh, she, she, she's able to portray these, these characters in a way that you, you empathize with them. You see real human beings with, with real loved ones, with fears, with, with goals in life. And so, you know, you, you, you're able to really watch this film and see something that you don't see when we see it on the news today. Right. You know, the, the before, during, and after one of these circumstances happens. Right. So. Wow. And it, it, it's almost like you're grabbing a rope and someone's pulling you. Sometimes you're, 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 you're pulling ahead and sometimes you're, you're trying to get away from that. It's, just, it was, it's a nightmare. You, you feel like you're in the movie. You know, right. and, and one thing that she's known for is doing war films. Mm -hmm. And to a certain degree, she shot this like a war film. You know, you, you really feel the intense drama as if you're participating one of the characters in the film. And I think it's something that everybody needs to see. We can all see this because it opens up a dialogue. Regardless of what side of, you know, the, the, the line you stand on when one of these incidents occurs, the main thing is that we have to be able to talk about it yeah. civilly and, and discuss it because we're all in this together. Right. You seem so passionate about this, and you're from the D.C. area. If you're in L.A. or wherever you're, you're working in the world on your films, and you, you see the news stories about people maybe in Baltimore, yeah. you know, who are rioting and people are getting hurt and there's all this, how do you feel about that? Well, one thing that I find that it's a good and a bad is nowadays, you know, we have our camera phones. That's become, you know, a, a, a weapon of choice just, just to, to at least capture what's happening. Um, and be an unbiased view. You can decide for yourself. But over the course of news coverage, we see it 5,000 times. We almost become desensitized to what we're watching. You know, and the one thing is that, you know, we have to remember that on both sides, these are people. They have families. They have loved ones. You know, and, and until we start empathizing and being able to communicate with each other as people first, we're not going to be able to, 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 to solve this problem. You know, and, and in order to heal, you have to be heard. And I think that in order to be heard, you have to be able to talk about difficult things. And that's why watching this movie, I feel that it opens that door to dialogue. You're missing one more step that I saw when I was watching this movie. You Please. want to be heard. You have to get out there because it's an important issue. And if nobody says anything, there are no change, but you might die. What, what you say, because I remember some of these guys, they're saying, look, we believe in something. And the one, the one officer is saying, look, just survive tonight. That one line, yeah. I'll, I'll remember that, you know, wow. for, for the, the just survive tonight. And this kid's going, because he's ready to unload on a bunch of military, a military truck. Sure. And, and off it goes. And, and that's the interesting part is that, you know, we don't hear what happens in the police station. 
Right. We don't hear the conversations that police officers have with each other and how one decision turns into three decisions and then it's a snowball effect. And now you got to figure out, OK, now we got to get out of it. You know, so I think I think that's what the, 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 the magic of this film was that we're able to see things be almost like a fly on the wall, conversations that normally we're not privy to that allows us to communicate with each other in a more empathetic manner. Gotcha. And that's I what it boils this. down to. I love this. As an artist, I feel like you're doing your part, putting your um, your imprint on society, you know, from an artistic standpoint. Do you feel like you're doing that as well? Oh, as far as this particular film, absolutely. You know, I've done films that are purely entertainment, you know, uh, uh, Fast and Furious, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Jumping the Broom, you know, yeah. movies that are feel-good movies uh, or, or fun movies to watch. But in this particular story, I felt like there was a social responsibility yeah. to tell this story. You know, and however I could participate in this, you know, I had the honor to, to play Congressman Conyers. Um, but this is, a, this is why I do this. You know, there, there is a part of art that has uh, the potential to influence society. Right. Yeah. And that's using art responsibly. Yeah. And this is what this film does. There you go, lads. Thank awesome. you so much. Thanks for bringing it. Detroit, it's awesome. Your jacket's awesome.